Hey guys, today I got five very useful tricks for Affinity Photo and I hope they will improve your workflow in this great software. So let's get started. Here I am in my Affinity Photo for desktop and my first tip is actually a tool that people tends to forget about, but it's really handy. I'm talking about blemish removal tool. It's here in this group together with other healing tools. And in this case, this tool is like semi-automatic. So we don't need to worry about stamping, about sourcing the stamp. Of course, it's a destructive tool. So it's changing the pixels on the layer permanently. But for small fixes, it's perfect. So take a look. We can adjust the size of the tool from this slider at the top. And then if you got texture that you want to clean up, you just click on the element and then pull it out into direction of the texture you like. This way, this new sample will replace this dirty element and you can clean up the texture using this handy tool very quickly. Don't forget to adjust the size to match the damage. Don't use too big, too big brush for it. All right. You don't need to only work with this tool when you got like walls or stuff or dirt on the lens, stuff like that. You can actually use this during your ray tracing process, like your portraits, you got face and then you got like little pimples or something like that. You can use this tool for that as well. As you can see, it's very nicely melting, adjusting the texture. So it's going to be also used even on human face. All right. Very good tool together with other healings tool here in this group. You got patch tool and also in painting brush tool and also this one that I mentioned today, blemish removal tool. So just simply adjust the size of the tip, click on the damage area and drag to the direction of non damage area. And that's it. That's fixed already. All right. So this is very nice tool and really quick to use. So first one was blemish removal tool. The second tip for today I got for you is simply to save your history of your document. The great thing about working in raster editors is that we can always go back in history and kind of redo part of the project if you really want. If you make multiple mistakes or you simply want to redesign something, you can go to history panel and you see all of our changes, everything we did so far in this project. I can click on any state I want. I can also use this handy slider at the top. Take a look, all dirty spots back on this wall. All right, so we can move to history panel. But if I reopen this document, my history will be gone. This is only for this state of the project, but we can stick the history together with the document permanently. To do that, simply go to file, and then you will see something like save history of document. So every time you reopen document, you will see all of your history, all steps you took until this point. Very handy because we can always go back even after we reopen a document. But you must be careful in case you are sending this to other people. They will also see your history. Keep that in mind. All right. So use this function wisely. All right. Let's move to tip number three. Mask to below. It's very handy. Take a look. I got shape here at the layer above. I draw this shape using smart shape tool that is in Affinity Photo here. So I draw this shape on the layer above the image. And now I will simply right click on this layer and select mask to below. And now my image that was below this shape is kind of trapped inside this shape. So it's masked. I can move the whole image or I can move only the shape. Take a look. Now I'm moving just the shape and I can see the image below. The image below is only limited to the shape right now. 
I can click on the whole layer and then I move it as one object, like normal. Even I can rotate this as one object, but I can also click on this white mask here on this shape and then I will be rotating only the shape and the image is below is still. We can even resize this shape right now. In case of this shape, this is smart shape, so we got some smart controls on it. If I click shape tool, I will see orange points around. Means I can still make adjustments to this shape, even it's clip tool below. So we can turn it into something more suitable for this image, like a flower. All right, so very handy because we still got the full control on the shape. It doesn't need to be a shape, it can be also editable text. That's great. So you can put image inside the text and the text is still editable. So we can put shapes, text, and then simply mask to below and our image will be trapped in that area in this text in this shape. All right, that was our tip number three. Tip number four is all about blur. So take a look, we got picture here. And now I will select filters, blur, and there is something called depth of field blur. If you select that, you will see something that you may recognize simply from your camera or from a mobile app for like quick editing on your mobile device. So this will blur the background we can adjust the radius here. We got this nice pop-up box. Take a look at the background. We can blow the background with this slider. We can even modify the shape of this overall thing. Take a look. Don't need to be a perfect circle. We can make this one larger. And then change the distance between big and small circle like this for the best result. Click apply and now you got this blur on your layer. Very handy because we can do it in one filter. We don't need to make duplicates of the same image with different blurs and then mask them and match together again. Very handy. All right. What's next? This is the, still the same tool, but I will show you it on different examples. So it's not a portrait. Here we got a city and we will apply exactly the same filter. So filter, blur, depth of field and take a look. This elliptical one is good for portrait but not really for something like city. So we can modify this. We can change the mode to tilt shift and you will have very quick tilt shift effect and you can of course control it just by pulling lines like this and very quick way to make a tilt shift blur on your image without having a duplicates of the same image and merging them together and stuff like that all right it's all in one filter okay and we finally reach my tip number five for today we will create image brush as you can know as you may know already you can simply click here in your brushes panel and then you can create new brushes right you can create new image brush this way you will be asked to load image from your computer but there's one more thing new brush from selection that's something we're going to do right now so let me just do a selection of this flower let me use quick selection tool and let's select the flower here. All right. I need to deselect this area in between. All right, good enough. Let's now use this selection to create a new image brush directly from the file without loading any outside image. So head to brushes, click here at the corner and then click new brush from selection.
Okay, and here's our new brush. We can select that from the list. And then, of course, we need to pick the brush tool. From here, we can adjust the size of the tool. Using the slider, we can also adjust the size of the brush by simply using square brackets on our keyboard. And we can use it very quickly. If you need to adjust properties of the brush, you can click this more button at the top. You can make the brush dynamic. And you, this way you can kind of save it for later with all the properties you modify. So that's nice. I hope those five tips will help you out with your Affinity Photo workflow. Keep in mind, I post two tutorials like this per week about Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. So if you are interested in those programs, please follow me here on YouTube and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.